study number five or etude number five and Mauro Guglielmi is a very famous and respected you know classical guitar composer and you know lots of classical guitarists whether they're studying with a private instructor or a university or wherever you know they definitely tackle and work on a lot of his music alongside you know composers like you know Fernando Sor and Carcassi and Bach and definitely you know uh, just a phenomenal musician you know I've worked on a lot of his pieces and etudes and little studies you know and they're always really musical and interesting very inspiring stuff but this lesson is going to focus on one of his pieces and I worked on this you know years ago and then over the years you know kind of returning to it I realized wow it's a great you know strength building exercise or study you know and we're basically using chords and playing them you know as arpeggios but there's a lot you can gain from, you know, kind of working on strength in your hand and this kind of position plane and finger independence and just the, the form of kind of working through some of these chords. So it's very demanding and we're just going to walk through it. And I did perform it here at the beginning, you know, on nylon string guitar, but I am going to switch to an electric guitar so you can actually see, you know, my fretboard and, you know, the dots on the fretboard so you can actually see where I'm playing. So that'll make it a little bit easier. I've always found it interesting, you know, when you go back and you kind of read about some of these famous composers, you know, whether they're Bach or Beethoven, Mozart, it could be Paganini, or even some of the classical guitar composers, you know, Soar and Carcassi and Giuliani. But it's funny because it's so long ago, and we usually just have these, you know, portraits or paintings of what the composer looked like. And they're usually kind of posed and, you know, painted in a way where they kind of look very intimidating, you know, and I know when I was younger in my bedroom, you know, I would put posters of Van Halen and Steve Vai and Hendrix and all these people everywhere. I still put, you know, things on the walls. I like, I like to see, you know, things hanging up. It's better than just a blank wall. But I do remember using some of those posters and I would select like certain shots where they were kind of looking a certain way. And I would use it for inspiration, but also a little bit of intimidation, you know, where it's like, gosh, you know, they're really staring at me. And I would sit there and practice in my room and I would look over at some of those posters or pictures and it would inspire me or influence me, you know, to try a little bit harder or practice a little bit longer. You know, I mean, if Steve Vai is staring at you, you're probably going to, you know, practice maybe a half hour, an hour longer. But while I did the prep for this lesson, you know, I did find some portraits and paintings of Giuliani and, uh, they were just kind of interesting, you know, he kind of looks almost snooty, you know, in the, in the portraits. So I made a couple jokes, I don't mean to offend anybody, but speaking of practicing, I mean, this is maybe the way Giuliani would look at you. And then as far as using a pick for this, I definitely would recommend using, you know, a finger style technique. I wouldn't really tackle this with a pick because your picking hand would really be working overtime. And that would probably be a big distraction for your fret hand. You would be so focused on what your picking hand's doing, you may not really realize or, you know, fully benefit from what the fret hand is doing. And plus, it's a lot easier, I feel, just to tackle it with finger picking. So if you're still, you know, kind of playing with finger style, you know, picking and, and uh, finger picking, this is a great, you know, attitude to practice because you can play it very slow. 
and you're really just kind of making these rolling arpeggios, you know, with your uh, with your picking hand. So as promised, I'm going to teach this and, and play this on electric guitar. That way you can actually see, you know, where I am. I thought about using acoustic guitar, but I thought, no, this will be different, and it'll be kind of interesting to play it on electric. And I'm just using a clean tone. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to play through the whole piece again, so you can kind of hear it and see it on electric guitar, and then I'm going to break it down. As you can see, the entire piece, it's in E minor, and the entire piece, you know, revolves around this kind of twisting and turning progression that moves from E minor, you know, eventually you have some different flavors of A minor in there, also a little bit of B7 kind of creeps in, and there's some kind of mutated chords that creep in too. So we're just going to walk through this. This entire lesson is going to focus on this piece, so we're just going to walk through it really slow, and what I want you to do is use kind of a firm fret hand, you know, push a little bit harder than you normally would, just to kind of help wake up and strengthen, you know, your fret hand. And, you know, you can definitely relax once you kind of get used to the, the, the shapes and the piece. But, um, but just go really slow. There's no reason to rush through this. Just go slowly and really kind of firmly fret everything and make strong connections, you know, with the strings. Okay, so we're just going to walk through this really slowly. I'm not going to, you know, try to impress anybody, you know, while I'm breaking this down. I'm just going to walk through it. So it starts with the open strings, the low E open, and then the open G, B, and high E, this. And then as soon as you do that once, you're immediately going to grab, you know, this E note on the second fret on the D string, and you're just rolling E minor like this. that E note is the melody, you know, you kind of hear that kind of chime three times. Like that. And then it's going to change to this shape. You know, very mysterious sounding chord, I love it. Um, that's going to be an E major 7, sus 2, sus 4. sus2, that's now the melody note. So it moved from that E to that F sharp. Now we're going to follow it with this, and that's basically E minor, but I choose to actually fret it this way, and I'm not using my index finger. And you can kind of see that transition to this. Basically just keep those two fingers right there, move up a half step, and then grab that B note right there with my middle finger. And that's just E minor. Now you're going to basically recycle the shape we had right here, but you want to move that up to where you have the 5th and 7th fret there with your index, your 3rd and pinky finger. And then that's going to change that to an E augmented sus2, sus4. got this. And then you want to move up E augmented sus2, sus4, 
sus4 and then after you play through that once move it up a whole step and then you're basically playing a little piece of e7 and then you're moving to this and that's going to be e augmented sus4 basically scoot back just a little bit and it's a little piece of that E minor bar chord but you're right here um, that's E minor and then this is really unusual right here so we're doing this you're basically on the eighth sixth and seventh fret on the D G and the B strings and then that's gonna be a B flat what a B flat diminished uh, sharp five there's this little melodic thing that happens in your pinky is kind of leading the charge here. So right there, you know, that B flat uh, diminished uh, sharp five, and then you're basically adding this G note. You're reaching up and grabbing that C sharp and then back to that G note. set of strings and up a fret and we're right here now starting on uh, the A string and once again your pinkies you're kind of making the changes there so that is kind of like B7 and then you're adding the C note right there with your pinky on the D string on the 10th fret and then you're basically adding the E note right there you know changing to that sus4 7 sus4 kind of over F sharp and then the next time through your pinky's gonna grab that C and then it scoots back to B right there start from this uh, B flat diminished um, sharp five something like that and then we're moving back down to open position right here you walk down the single notes on the high E string then you basically have this A minor 7 uh, right here to A minor 6 just change that G to F sharp and then you have this so you can think of that as E minor 9 over B and then E minor over B Seven sus four to B seven. And then the, the last part of the piece is just all these different forms of E minor. And you're gonna start with the open strings, and then you're kind of just coming down the high E string with uh, you know notes from, from that chord. This E note to the G back to E and then you're gonna grab that B the E the G on the low E string there on the third fret the B and then just finished with E minor something like that like I was saying I would go very slow with this piece don't worry about you know racing through it or impressing somebody with speed and I have seen there's a lot of performances of this on YouTube and I honestly feel everybody plays it way too fast and I know it's actually written with sextuplets I usually almost play it as triplets and I think it loses something if you go too fast because then it's more this kind of blurry you know racing kind of thing and I think at a slower tempo it sounds very melodic and moody you know and it kind of loses that if you if you go too fast 
So I would go very slow like this. And fret, you know. You know, I'm not hurting my finger, but I am pushing, you know, with some force, you know, on that E note. And then the same thing with this chord, you know, the E major 7, sus 2, sus 4. mashing the strings really hard, but I am, you know, holding down with a fair amount of pressure. And then the same thing with E minor right here. And then just keep going. transcription for this piece definitely helps and makes you know it makes it much easier to kind of see what you're doing and where your fingers are heading and going and uh, you know the patreon supporters you know for this channel are definitely gonna have an advantage here because I am gonna post the transcription you know for this piece on patreon so if you're interested you know for five bucks you can become a patreon supporter and you have access to a lot I mean there's over a hundred you know PDF and uh, notation files available on patreon but that's going to make everything much easier. And I have a feeling if you asked, you know, Giuliani for the tabs, he might react like this. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with Mario Giuliani's study number five. Very interesting piece, you know, and I've learned a lot from studying classical guitar. And even though my technique, you know, I mean, I'm sure some traditional, you know, classical guitarists are probably frowning at the way I'm, you know, playing the guitar. You know what leg I'm using. I'm playing on electric guitar. You know, I'm breaking all the rules right here. But uh, I learned a lot. You know, aside from just learning, you know, how to read music and some of the, you know, the raw and basic technique, I just fell in love with a lot of the composers and a lot of the music too. You know, Fernando Sor is brilliant. Carcassi and I love Bach. And speaking of Bach too, uh, I did recently pick these books up and I posted about it on Facebook. And I'm going to work with these uh, this winter. And especially when things get kind of bad and, and I become snowbound, I'm going to bust out some Bach and really study, you know, some Bach this year. And I bought all three versions, you know, the uh, violin, the lute, and the cello. And um, I did notice some typos, you know, in the book, which is kind of normal. I mean, there's typos in almost every book. Um, and I don't mind to make some of those little corrections as far as a fingering issue or, you know, just kind of a random note somewhere. But I love having all of that music in one place, which is great. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Lunate Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.